Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video, what I'm going to do is walk you through the first two years of my computer science degree. Now what that's going to mean is pretty much just going through all of the different classes that I had to take, discussing how difficult they are, what I learned in them, and what you can expect from them. So this video is really designed for people that are just maybe interested in what classes I'm taking, or that are actually looking to get into a program like computer science or software engineering, and are curious about what to expect and what you're actually going to be taking, especially in those first two years. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the video and look at my first two years of computer science. All right, so I have my laptop here and what I'm gonna be doing is I'll put it on the screen, but I'm just gonna go through my unofficial transcript. I'm gonna to talk to you about each course I had to take, how well I did in that course, and then compare that to the average uh, and what I kind of saw across the course and how difficult it actually really was. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with my 2018 fall term, which would have been my first semester in university. And that was, I guess, just about a year and a half ago. In this semester, what I had to do was take three mandatory courses, and I actually had two electives. Now, that's because I kind of went off of my course sequence, but I'll tell you which ones were electives and which ones were mandatory for computer science, and then again, just go through and talk about how difficult these courses were. So the courses I had to take in first semester were engineering economics, technical report writing, introduction to computing one, calculus one, and introduction to linear algebra. Now, the three mandatory courses out of that were the last three, so... Uh, computing one, calc one, and linear algebra one. And these are actually what are considered some of the most difficult classes uh, for computer science, at least in the first year. I know a lot of people that struggled with this, and you guys can see as I'm popping this up on the screen, the averages of these courses, uh, which were about five. So I believe uh, computing one had a 5.03 average, uh, calc one had 5.47, and linear algebra had 5.2. Now this is on a 10.0 GPA scale, where 10 is, I believe, a 90 plus. So like an A plus, would be a 10 um, and I think that an A is a 9 and that's like between 85 and 90 or something uh, but that's kind of the range on the 10.0 GPA scale for any of you that are confused. So let me walk through these classes I'll talk about the computer science one specifically and how difficult they were. So computing one is a very easy programming class. In my university, this was done in Python, and this just teaches you fundamental programming concepts. So like variables, data types, lists, sets, um, some standard programming problems, nothing too difficult. We had a few kind of mini assignments where we had to work on like a card game. That was like the biggest assignment we did. And then near the end of the semester, we got into classes and objects in Python and started just getting an introduction to object-oriented programming. So this was not very difficult. I think the most advanced topics we covered were object-oriented programming and recursion. And that was all of computing one. This was done in Python. So I found that very easy, although you can see by the average that a lot of people did have difficulty with this. And this would be a definitely a hard course if you've never programmed before. Moving on, I had Calc 1. Now, Calculus 1 is actually a fairly difficult math class when it comes to the second semester. So what you cover in Calc 1 is kind of a general review of grade 12 math. So you do like advanced functions math for the first probably I want to say month or two where you're just doing derivatives um, and like problems related to derivatives. And then in the second half, they kind of flip things around and you start working in integrals, which is definitely a difficult topic for a lot of people and something that personally I struggled a little bit with, although it wasn't too bad near the end. Okay, so that was Calc 1, probably one of the hardest math classes I've had to take just because of the integrals that we had to do at the end. But moving on, we had Introduction to Linear Algebra. Now, a lot of people had difficulty with this, and that's because this is a more abstract math class. It's kind of difficult to memorize problems in linear algebra, I would say. It's a very different way of thinking about math, and you're dealing with um, kind of matrices and three-dimensional math, and it's a really cool class, but definitely a fairly difficult course. So getting those out of the way at the beginning uh, was definitely a nice relief for me. So those were the courses I had to take that semester. I also took engineering economics and technical report writing. Technical report writing is mandatory for me, but I didn't have to take it that semester. This is just an absolutely jokes uh, kind of English class that teaches you about how to write properly in an engineering setting. So how to reduce ambiguity, not be vague, all of that. And then engineering economics was just like a kind of an economics class designed for engineers to teach you a little bit about business um, and accounting and like kind of all these different areas of business almost combined into one. And I took that just because I wanted to take that class. All right, so now we're moving on to the 2019 winter term. So this would be first year, second semester. Now, the courses I took here was business management, 
Digital Systems 1, Introduction to Computing 2, Calculus 2, and Discrete Math for Computing. So this definitely seems a little bit more complicated than the previous semester, and you're going to see that as we go through here. So the first course is Introduction to Business Management. Now, this actually had an extremely low average for me at just under 5.0, so the class average, not my average. Uh, and that was a class that I took because I'm in that specialization in business, and I had to take that class. So that was just Pretty much teaching you how to be a manager in a business set. Next, we had Digital Systems 1. I absolutely hate this course, and I just don't like any of the hardware-related computing stuff, but that's what this course is. So Digital Systems teaches you about how computers work on a lower level, so about circuits, AND gates, OR gates, flip-flops, how you can actually do computations in a computer. So like, we write this code, but what does it get translated down into? Well, it gets translated down into wires, right, which are really just zeros or ones on and off. And then you kind of learn about binary and hexadecimal and ox octal and all these different base numbering systems and then creating like circuits pretty much. So you'll deal with things like multiplexers, decoders, encoders. That's what this does. It teaches you how to build digital systems, which was cool, but definitely not my bread and butter. So then we move to introduction to computing too. So this was the second computing class, and this was taught in Java. This really focused on object-oriented programming and then basic data structures like stacks and queues. So this was trying to train you on pretty much working with objects, working with classes, more advanced data structures, so setting up methods, static methods, class methods. I would just say this was an object-oriented programming class, and that's what it really focused on. The projects we had to do in this were not quite super difficult, but they definitely were more involved. And I think a lot of people struggled with this class, especially the format of the exams, which was like a fill in the blank. But overall, decent class taught in Java. And that's kind of what we did in that class was just cover OOP and um, a little bit more advanced kind of problems than we had done in computing one. Okay, so now we move on to calculus two. Now again, a lot of people struggled with this class. Uh, this is an addition of calculus one. You can imagine it would probably be more difficult. And in this, we really just focus way more on integrals and applications of integrals. And then a few other topics that I can't think of right now because it's been a while since I did that class, but that is a more advanced math class. And now I'm glad I do not have to take any more calculus. These were just the two I had to get out of the way uh, in first year. So that's a bit about Calc 2. You can see the class average was probably the lowest I've seen at 4.27. And again, that is because this is a difficult course that does actually require a fair amount of work. And if you don't put in that work, good luck getting a good grade in that class. All right, next we had discrete math for computing. And this is a fairly difficult math class, although it's pretty interesting. And what you do in this is you learn about logical math. So that's probably a pretty bad way to put it. But some of the things we covered was like graph theory. We did like truth trees. We did like arguments, um, logic statements. Essentially, this is like mathematical proofs. And this is proofs specifically for computing. So essentially trying to take a problem and prove to you that your solution is correct or that something is correct using logic. It's difficult really to explain all the things in this class unless you see it. Uh, but these are where we did things like logic puzzles, right? Like, you know, the knights and knaves puzzles, that's a thing. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much discrete mathematics for computing. Again, a lot of people struggled in this class. This is difficult. Uh, when you get to the mathematical proofs, that becomes pretty hard. You have to pretty much write out full proofs for ridiculous statements. Like, you know, if X to the power of E is divisible by five, then prove that two P is divisible by six, right? Like stupid stuff like that you got to prove. So that was those courses. And now we're moving on to the 2019 fall term, which would have been last semester for me. So first semester of second year. So in this semester, I took financial accounting, computer architecture, one data structures and algorithms, introduction to software engineering and social psychology and everyday life makes perfect sense, right? That I took that course. Okay. So let's just go through them one by one. Uh, you can see this semester I did quite well. And the first course I took was financial accounting. Now I actually needed to take this class because I'm in this business specialization. This is probably the most useful class I've taken at university by far. And I would definitely recommend everyone to take an accounting class if they think that they can handle the difficulty of a class like financial accounting. Personally for me, uh, I kind of run a business. I have all this stuff going on with money on the side that I need to be able to manage. And that definitely helped me a ton understand some fundamental principles behind doing basic accounting, which I think is really valuable. Then I took computer architecture one. So this is kind of an add on like 
the prerequisite for this course is Digital Systems 1. And what this teaches you is actually how computers work on a lower level. So I know I said that for Digital Systems, but this is more applicable to an actual computer. So you're doing things with like data lines, you're writing like assembly language code. This is really understanding how a computer actually does arithmetic on values and how you have like registers and you take values from those registers and add them together and store things in memory. And it's a cool class. It's really nice to understand how those things work, but it's a pain. And if you're more into software, then this class will probably be difficult for you as it was for most of my colleagues with, uh, you know, 5.37 average for that class out of 10. Next, we had data structures and algorithms. Now, this is the famous class. A lot of people think this class is quite difficult. This for me was actually a very easy class. Uh, and what this taught was just data structures and algorithms. So it started with stacks, queues, linked lists, binary trees, AVL trees. Um, I think we did red, black trees, priority queues, heaps, different sorting algorithms. This is a cool class and it's very fundamental for computer science. People actually didn't do that poorly in my university unit. 6.40 was the average of that. And that's really what it covers, just fundamental data structures and algorithms that you kind of need to know if you're going to be in computer science. So that's that course right there. A lot of people get intimidated by that, but at least at my university, I did not find it crazy difficult. Now moving down to introduction to software engineering. So this course really tries to teach you about software engineering. And this is really more of working in teams, um, setting deadlines, like working with GitHub. A majority of what we did in this course was learn about actually designing software. So looking at, okay, how do you make a UML? How do you make a use case diagram? What about an activity diagram? Uh, what about a sequence diagram? All these different things. So drawing those out. And then also, I believe our final project was actually building a full Android app. So that was... Um, definitely difficult, but over the whole semester, we pretty much had this time to build this Android application and we had to work in teams of five. We had to have a GitHub repository set up and it was definitely a cool, interesting class. Can't say it was super practically useful. Some of the stuff they were teaching was quite outdated, but you know, it's a good class to have to teach you how to work in a team and actually get a project done and, and all these diagrams and UMLs and all of that. Finally, social psychology in everyday life. Um, I didn't really pay attention to this class at all. In fact, this was like online exams, online midterms, so I would just not do anything for the course and then just guess for the uh, the exams in the midterm. So, you know, you can see that reflected in my grade. Don't really need to talk about that. This was just an elective I kind of had to take because I have to take electives some of them that are not in like math and computing and business. And finally, we get to the last semester that I just finished. Unfortunately, there's no averages for these courses, but I will walk through what I took and tell you about how difficult they were. Keep in mind, I did the exams for this online, so you can see that reflected in my grade. <laughs> okay, so the first class I had was social context of business. This was again, a business class I had to take as part of the specialization. This just focuses on a business's like reputation in society. If they're being a good social citizen or they have good social capital, how are they giving back to society, the community, and how does that have an effect on the bottom line? That's what that talked about. You can see the grade point there. Next, we had discrete structures. So this is like the more advanced level of discrete math. So the one that I took last semester and discrete structures was definitely a hard class. If this was not online, I would not done have done this well, uh, but this deals with Pretty much just mathematical proofs, learning a little bit about cryptography and learning how you can pretty well prove algorithms and prove if things are true. One of the cooler things we did was induction. So you have a base case, you add one to it, you prove something there. I, I, I can't get too far into it. I don't want to butcher the explanation. Uh, we talked a little bit about graph theory, but this is a really, these classes are really fundamental. They're cool to understand, but they're definitely difficult. And I would rank discrete structures as probably the hardest class I've had to take so far, um, just due to the complexity of the proofs and the idea that you have to do a lot of practice proving these kind of crazy statements with mods and exponents and all that um, to really be successful in that class. Next, we had programming paradigms. Now, what programming paradigms meant was designed to do was essentially teach you about a bunch of different paradigms in programming. Now, I know that's a bad explanation based on the name, but the idea is like languages like Python and Java are object-oriented programming languages, which means they have a unique style to the way you write them. But there's other programming languages like Golang, which is one of the ones we actually learned in this, like Scheme, like Prolog, that have different styles and they're known as like logical programming languages, imperative programming languages, functional programming languages, and they just work a little bit differently. And it's cool to get an understanding of how all these things actually work and why these languages are different. So some things are much better for specific tasks than others, but the languages we did in here was Scheme, Prolog, Go and Java. Those are the four languages we learned through the semester and we did projects in each of them. Interesting, wasn't crazy difficult. You can see, actually not here, uh, but I have the average, I think on the exam was like 85 or something. So people did quite well in that course. Finally, databases one. All right, so databases one is a 
pain for a class, but this teaches you database systems. So SQL code, but also like how does a database maintain information? How do we back things up in case of like power failures? Like what is a RAID array to array? Like pretty much everything about persistent data storage is what this aims to give you like a general foundation in. And then the project for this was actually to make a database system. Like an example is like Airbnb. Like you had to recreate something that was like a hotel kind of system or like renting property kind of system. You had to make the database schema in SQL and then you you had to write SQL queries that could return information, insert information, delete information, etc. And then finally, we have professional practice in computing. This class is the easiest course I've taken in university by far. And this was literally just trying to teach you. Um, I, I couldn't even tell you, I didn't go to any of the classes. I just wrote the stuff just kind of by guessing it was pretty well common sense. And this is teaching you like, if you're an engineer, what do you need to do to practice professionally and be ethical and not break the law. That's essentially what this was teaching you to do. So that has pretty much been it, all of the courses and everything that I did in second year. And I'll wrap this up by saying that so far, honestly, I've enjoyed quite a few of these classes. I've learned a fair amount. I will say that a lot of the stuff is definitely outdated, but it is important. And as much as a lot of what I've done so far, you've seen has just been straight math or logic. Those are really important. And those have definitely made me a better programmer and a more well-rounded person for sure. And I would say that if I had decided not to go to university, I probably would not have the same math background that I do now. I probably wouldn't have learned those courses. And I can say that there's a lot of value, especially if you understand what happens in them. And even things like computer architecture and digital systems, as much as you might not enjoy those courses, and I definitely didn't, they do actually give you a really good understanding of the lower level of computers, which give you an appreciation when you're actually writing code. So anyways, that has pretty much been it for the uh, two years of computer science. Again, pretty casual video here. I hope you guys enjoyed. The idea was just to give everyone who kind of wanted to know an idea of what's actually going on in a computer science degree in 2020 and what you can expect from these courses. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in another YouTube video.